，呃，我的名字是洪一杰，呃，今年二十二岁，呃，我来自中国赛区，呃，我的 ID 是 C L 周楼，呃，我是史莱斯，呃，史莱斯车的一员，小鱼是他他。他去年夺得的嘉年华的亚军，呃，他平常给帮助我针做一些针对的练习，还有教我一些调整心态的方法。呃，我第一个对手是 n i l e s 其实呃，我对他的了解就仅仅在于就是嘉年华嘉年华预选赛他的那些表现之类。呃，我击败他的信心还是很大。n i l e s 他四天前刚刚有了个小孩，那你觉得？你是不是要对他不要太狠？呃，首先我们要先先恭喜呀，奈尔斯当上爸爸。但是呃，我是不会对他手软，因为我想让他回去照顾小孩。Hey everyone, I'm here with Nias, and Nias, we didn't get to do a little pre-video interview with you because you were actually home doing some very exciting stuff. Can you tell us about it? Oh yeah, my, my daughter was born on Friday and had a really great couple days. Uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, like nothing I've ever seen before. Oh, congratulations to you. What is it like to, to have such an intense family experience and then come all the way out here and play competitive Hearthstone? Well, it's certainly tough. Uh, it would have been nice to have more time, but I'm just grateful that I didn't have to drop everything and leave on Sunday because I don't think they allow car seats and taxi cabs. No, they do not. Uh, so I actually have a, a question. You said you didn't have a lot of time, but you found time to uh, apparently join a professional Hearthstone team. Well, um, I'm teaming up with Hearthlytics, and it's more of a, a casual association. Um, there's uh, no hardcore commitment. Uh, I'm still unsure of whether I want to continue being a Hearthstone pro player, but uh, it, it's great to be part of the team, and uh, I look forward to working with them in the future. All right. Well, I know you're excited to get in your matches. You flew all the way here just for this, so I'm going to hand it over to the casters, and uh, let's kick things off. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, so, Nias just had a daughter three or four days ago here, and you know, gets a few days to spend with her, and then he comes right back here to compete at the Hearthstone World Championship. Obviously had a very strong showing, kind of one of the unknown players in the America's Championship, but really, you know, took care of business there, had a very strong finish. Mm -hmm. okay. Just crazy stuff that he just had a kid. What's it, I mean, what do you think is going through his head when he comes to this? You know, obviously, as one of the favorites from the Americas region, what, what goes through his head when he's coming here to try to play for the Hearthstone World Champion title? Mm. Overall, I think getting the BlizzCon trophy for his daughter would be awesome, would be the number one priority. But otherwise, he just needs to focus on the Smash first, right? It's one match at a time. And, um, you know, if he gets to go to BlizzCon, all the more better. I'm sure his family will be cheering him on. Yeah, one hundred thousand dollars also buys a lot of things for them. <laughs> Lots a lot of toys, of nice, nice toys for their baby. <laughs> I was gonna say, I hear children are expensive. I don't know firsthand, but uh, you know, for Zoro, obviously totally different. He did not just have a daughter, so he's coming in here with a you know, few different uh, priorities. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he even charitably offered to send Nias back home to you know, oh, be with his daughter. So, yeah. uh, Zoro, <laughs> Zoro received very high praise from Tiddler Celestial, saying you know he was one of the best players in the region. So. Very high praise, obviously, given how good Tiddler Celestial is, but it looks like we're about ready to hop into our match. Yeah, Tiddler Celestial, last year's uh, runner-up, one of the one of the most successful uh, professional Hearthstone players, I would say, L over $100,000 in winnings, has done well every single tournament that he's played in. Has his own team, Team Celestial, and Zoro is right. going to be carrying the flag at this tournament. And if he's going to be on the same team as Celest uh, uh, Tiddler, his skill level is going to be at uh, standard, right? So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see his games. Yeah, Diddler himself is in the in the house watching, and uh, I'm sure they practice together. I'm really excited Definitely. to see what kind of strategy they come, came up with. Right, yeah, we see uh, Nias actually uh, decide to forego his uh, his customary uh, handshake, which is the push-up challenge, which he issued to uh, VLPS at the America's Championship. So uh, with Zoro, let's just focus on the card game, <laughs> obviously. Um, we look down at the classes, though. We see Nias brought Druid, Hunter, and Mage. Uh, Zoro brought Druid, Hunter, and Paladin, so uh, we saw today was really the first time we've actually run into Seeker Paladin. Yesterday was all about the mid-range Paladin, so 
Uh, we do know that Zoro is running Secret Paladin. Maybe this is kind of something that over in you know China it seems like a a more solid pick. Yeah, they do like creatures that you know swing a lot, and Mysterious Challenger is one of those cards that really swing the game, right? It'll be interesting to see if they uh, you know put some thing more swing cards like Harrison Jones, like Kazami Stick, or something like that. Boy. And uh, yeah, game one has started here. Yep, and we see the divine favor in the deck and an equality as well. It's yeah, so be. Divine Favor is a, is a card where a lot of players now are kind of not even sure they want to run the one copy of it. But sure. against Freeze Mage, you're going to get a ton wow, of value like, off yeah, of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just keep it if I was Zoro. But Zoro does not have the knowledge that Nias is playing this uh, Freeze Mage, so I, we can't, can't really blame him if he chooses to throw it back. But if he was to keep it, he can almost guarantee drawing five or maybe even six cards with it. Exactly, and it seems like Nias is only going to keep uh, his double two drops, so the mulligan is not really going to help uh, Zoro determine too much. Because usually if you're Freeze Mage, you would, uh, you know, mulligan all your hand, right? You're looking for very specific cards. Yeah, and it does throw away the Divine Favor. It's, a, it's a, also a little bit safe that way, because I'm sure if you're running one Divine Favor, you're probably running two, and if he was to draw the second Divine Favor, that would be horrible. Mm -hmm. Right, we see uh, Zoro's opening hand, not the greatest. Uh, Repentance is really not something you want to play early on because usually those minions <laughs> very ha have very low health to begin with. Right. He's going to go ahead and do it though just to get it out of his hand, play something down, and, and maybe force Nias to play around whatever he thinks that Seeker might be. Yeah, but that's... not going to get a ton of value probably. Uh, Akov well. listening absolutely nothing here. Well, I suppose if there's going to be, if he hero powers here and uh, Nias is playing the Mad Scientist into it, then he gets a trade, but yeah. not all that helpful. Yeah, it's, it's not a, Wouldn't it be bad? Right, it's not a total waste yeah. necessarily. And again, uh, on Nias' side, given that Freeze Mage tends to be a little bit less creature oriented, the secrets aren't necessarily something he's maybe considering as heavily. He probably just wants to dig more into his deck, find his win conditions, and kind of play to his own agenda. Because once, uh, it's interesting, no, once Mysterious Challenger comes out at a six, as a six drop, Freeze Mage really has the option to start locking up that board for turns on end, so yep. it's not necessarily as menacing to you know the Freeze Mage as it might be against other decks. Exactly. And now that Zoro knows that you know it's pretty much going to be a Freeze Mage, uh, he wished he had the Divine Favor. Yeah, he might still draw into it though. There's plenty of time. And uh, Nia's very happy to see that uh, Repentance there not getting all that much value. Something like Competitive Spirit would have put a lot more pressure on. Him. Yeah, we see here. Oh, that's oh, a wow. great draw. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, Secret Paladin is one of those decks where, obviously, by virtue of having so many secrets in there, it can be a little bit weaker, but cards like Piloted Shredder can you know, help it maintain power on curve. I have to point out that Zoro might still be thinking that uh, the deck that Nias is playing is the Tempo Mage. It could be possibly oh, be, because that secret oh, could yeah. be mid entity right there. So the Shredder, even though we, when we look at this right now, it looks fairly obvious he's played the Shredder. Right. But for Zoro, well, now he's about to figure out what it is. If right. he attacks with the Recruit first and finds the Ice Barrier, yes. then he will know for sure. Then so the know. ordering does kind of matter a little bit here. Absolutely. Yeah, and his other options are obviously very subpar at the moment. He doesn't really want to play down that Noble Sacrifice just yet. <laughs> Cog Hammer on a 1-1 one -one is very very much not what you want. Yeah, yeah, and he already has a weapon. Even though it's a weak one, it's only a one attack weapon. The difference between that and the Cog Hammer is very small. Whoa, this, this might oh, be a huge mistake. Oh, you need to attack mistake. first. Yeah, you do need to attack first. You're going to attack anyways, right? So he oh, might right. as well fish for that information first. Yeah, he's definitely... Oh, running. he thinks it's actually a counter spell. Oh, no. But now... Well, the, the important thing here is he did he did figure out that it's, you know, it's not counter spell, so he knows that now. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he'll he'll find out that's Ice Barrier. Yep. So, and that's fine. You can play down that Shredder next turn. Mm -hmm. That uh, is true. Yep. But, uh, he's just going to keep swinging face. Yeah, the Shredder definitely would have been more pressure, though. Yeah, and absolutely. he chooses not to attack with the weapon. Oh he, oh, he used the previous weapon. Right. So that's what he did. Trying to get more value off of the, uh, yeah, off the maze there. Nias choosing to ping the face here because of the potential of, uh, of an Avenge. He does not want to trigger the Avenge for now. Right. So, that's very uh, heads up play. Generally, when you're playing as a Freeze Mage, the HP above 15 isn't necessarily something you're super concerned about because you're sure. planning to Alex for that win condition generally. Yep. Uh, but yeah, again, doesn't really want to mess around with Avenge, give the Paladin more power. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to just pass. Yeah. What if you never find that Alex Straza? So it's worth just pinging the face. Yeah, I guess the other option was to ping off the Divine Shield. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Do. But it's a close call. Can't blame him for pinging face then. Now, uh, Zoro's turn six and seven at the moment kind of write themselves. Yeah. Very strong plays. But for Nias, um, this hand is not necessarily a hand you want to, you know, reduce down. I mean, there's like a secret. Um, there's two Ice Lances, which are really, really helpful if there's zero mana. If you draw the Antonidas, then, you know, it's pretty good. But, uh... Maybe he's just gonna draw more cards and see what happens. 
Seems like he's see. going to coin out the Ember Thorison here, hoping that okay. there's no repentance out there. I think, I think it is worth noting, making the Ice Lance free is probably at least something that's worth considering. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the other things, yeah, he's got two free Ice Lances now. Uh, if you find something like Antonidas, those are just free fireballs at this point. Mm. Um, he has a cheaper fireball. And, I mean, it never hurts, and I, I don't really think he had a very solid play otherwise. Whoa. Armorsmith. Armorsmith is really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite good against yeah, the Freeze Mage. Yeah. It's actually amazing. That's potentially the best one he could have yeah. hoped for. So for, for players who are maybe not familiar with uh, how Freeze Mage works, uh, one of the biggest ways you can counter Freeze Mage is to develop a whole bunch of armor. Uh, generally, in warrior heavy metas, you don't tend to see very many Freeze Mages because that armor can just shut them out of the game because they have usually a finite amount of damage. Uh, Archmage and tonight's notwithstanding. So, yeah, if he can get a lot of armor off of that armorsmith, yeah. uh, he could put himself out of range. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he is, too. Considering stick around. Considering Zoro's hand, playing the very obvious uh, Mysterious Challenger here, not the greatest value ever, as he already had two secrets out, so he only, only pulled two extra, but uh, still a nice additional mm. pressure. Right, and I uh, have to believe Counter or Competitive Spirit is one of those secrets. Oh, yeah. So that, uh, that'll make that board a little bit more menacing. And we're at the point, though, where Nias has those free spells. He can start putting on the brakes for the next few turns and kind of like fishing around for those cards he wants. We see he also has Pyroblast. Uh, I don't feel like most Freeze Mages are, are running the one copy of Pyroblast anymore, right. but I've seen so far anyway. For example, uh, like Purple is running two anti bots instead right. for a more anti-aggro kind yep. of build up. But uh, this will give Nias uh, a lot of damage, which will make the couple of armor points that Zoro gets off the armor smith. Maybe not necessarily as impactful uh, because just a ton of damage. What do you guys think of the first Noma here? Oh, he's just gonna kill off the armor. Oh, he really yeah. wants the armor, so that's why. But it's going to come back. He, he will be able to bring it afterwards, so no big deal. If he can make the turn timer, that is. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Maybe he ran out of well, time. Well, the, the hero power was flipped oh, he over, got it. so oh, yeah. He got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, he got hit on the uh, divine shield instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might have been one of those things where the timer was winding down. And he had to just use it. Yeah, right. I, th I think that might be the case. Because being the armor smith, but maybe in Ooh, some ways so made more sense there. Right. The yeah, he probably just played out the boom. Yeah, yeah. It's so much uh, pressure. Oh, yeah, wow. And now Nia's really looking for that doomsayer. Yeah, the uh, mm. the blizzard will kind of staunch the bleeding here. Although he's going to get a ton of armor if the Six blizzard comes armor, down. Because he didn't, he missed right. the ping on the armor smith last, and that's coming back to haunt him now. Yeah, that's a it's an unfortunate situation for him still. Uh, all, he's really a few cards away from clearing this board, and then the Paladin is, as far as he knows, kind of out of gas. Yep. So, and, you know, that said, Secret Paladin, one of the biggest problems with the deck uh, to a lot of players is that it's a little bit like, once you get past those primary threats, it's full of secrets which on their own aren't very impactful. You have some kind of mid-range minions, but already seeing Dr. Boom, the only other thing you're maybe concerned about are the second Mysterious Challenger and Tyrion Forgering. Yep. The rest of it is not too uh, impactful, so. Yeah, Nias feels pressured enough to just you know, spend his Ice Lances to clear the board. This is also good though, because, uh, and maybe he's doing this intentionally, he's playing around Divine Favor. Sure. <laughs> Golden's a great. <laughs> It's, it looks so silly, but with the Divine <laughs> Favor, uh, he might just go for it. But on the other hand, if he Divine Favors here, he will still have four mana available to potentially play in something like another Shredder. I think something it depends on account. whether he plays Equality or not. Like, Equality Consecrate is a board clear. I think we saw one in his Mulligan, his, mm -hmm. oh, his opening hand uh, before that, so it, it's a close call if whether right. or not to Consecrate first. I, I think he might uh, choose either either way around. Because the thing is, like, if uh, your opponent plays like a uh, Antonidas and then Frostboard or something, mm -hmm. you have no answer to deal with that, so... Right. Oh, he, was, he likes the extra card instead. Yeah. And he does have the weapon, so maybe with the Equality he will be able to do that. And another thing about yeah. this is, is that he has the Redemption up, so... Oh, the there's the equality. Wow. Mm. So with, with that redemption, he put, maybe didn't want to hit all power anyway. He did pick up the Shredder, so going for the Divine Favor first would have allowed him to play that. So one consideration as a Paladin player that I think you make, and this is just from a background in playing more mid-range, is that Paladin has very few sources of direct damage from the hand. And when you're at a point, it, the Hunter obviously excels at just doing that direct damage and not even having to deal with the, the extra eight armor uh, from the secret. But as a Paladin, the Consecration can actually just kind of be what gets you the win, but uh, you have to make that, that's, that's a very far-reaching decision, and he had to kind of decide right then and there if he wanted yeah. the cards, and, you know, this is probably the smallest amount of cards you, you really see a Secret Paladin get off of a Freeze Mage. Right? Oh yeah, probably. That, that was not, I mean, even though it was very effective there, drawing those cards, it, it's, it, like you mentioned, it wasn't like the greatest one ever. P Zoro picking up another Mysterious Challenger, mm. but he doesn't have all that many secrets remaining in his deck. Right. It might just be more of a 6-6 six, six for 6, which is still, you know, it's very strong, doesn't die to flame strike. Very respectful, yeah. yeah.
think he might respectable. have a respectable stat line. Respectable. Yeah, respectable. respectable. He, he might have like another competitive spirit, right? But that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. And this goes back to earlier we were, we were kind of discussing on the desk that wow. you know, the oh, secret wow. paladin lineup, as far as like what secrets you run, is very much kind of in flux these days. Mm -hmm. It hasn't reached a refined point like some lists have. I think it's pretty cool that it kind of keeps the, the players guessing. And yep. You don't know that. Uh, after a long period of time, and maybe in six months, it's going to be more or less standard to have X amount of uh, secrets. For now. So, a quality coming out there. Let's let's kind of look at what he had. He could have technically traded the 6-1 into the Acolyte right. of Pain to ensure one draw. You don't want to do that. You want to be doing damage. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't have another clear way to get rid of that Acolyte of Pain. And the only other thing you really think about with a quality is like Archmage Antonitis. Right. Uh, but he made the decision that he wants to push damage now, and I really like it. I really like it. It's well, an aggressive play. There are so many benefits to using equality there. You can yeah. get to uh, deny a card. You also get to make an extra body to avenge, uh, to avenge procs. So um, that was a really good move. Yeah, he's he's in a really good position right now. He's got that 9-8. He's kind of knocking on the door here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be for Nias to not necessarily just keep playing secrets and stalling it, but to try to find a way to, to turn it. Because he doesn't, I mean, he has the ice block, which he can play with uh, Antonidas, but obviously not next turn because it won't have pop yet. Yeah, Nias really looking for something like the last cross to know. That would be quite amazing in this situation. Even an arcane intellect would be very solid. Ooh. Doomsayer, Doomsayer, but, but no freeze no to freeze. go with it. Yeah. So maybe you need your Doomsayer on your opponent's <laughs> side of the board off the shredder. <laughs> what yeah. Guys, what do you guys, okay, okay, don't, don't laugh at this. What do you guys think of Pyroplastic, the mysterious challenger? Um, oh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not kidding. I'm no, not kidding. I don't think I don't think that's bad. I think that's the alleged play. <laughs> it's just because you told me not to laugh. I had to laugh. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Okay. I, see. It's, I think you are obviously a way better Hearthstone player than I am, Speed. So I trust you when you wow. say. <laughs> oh heels. my gosh. Oh man. Uh, Does it feel like a challenger? Wow. No. What a jerk. <laughs> I don't like oh, that Lightwell. My goodness. Lightwell and Armorsmith, two of the very, very good minions against Freeze Mage. Yeah, and they, they really shore up kind of what they, is the traditionally the, the more aggressive Paladin variant's weakness. Mm -hmm. No lay on hands, no way to generate extra health. You don't tend to see NT kill bots, so uh, good thinking there, Shredder. Way to, way to be piloted by an, a Lightwell. Yeah. <laughs> How good. do you get a license oh. as a Lightwell? <laughs> good hey, pilots for this That's matchup. why you run Pilot Shredder, because you're playing all the two drops. Right. Right. You just need to think about which one you want at a specific moment. <laughs> right. Uh, so... Again, Zoro's board position really good here. He can, uh, if he wants to, he could pop the ice block, mm -hmm. but he's obviously evaluating just getting rid of the Doomsayer. Right. Uh -huh. He does give up his board if he wants to pop the block. And if Alex Trouser comes down, then he's in for a little trouble. So he just clears it, maintains board pressure, and pops the block next turn. Yeah, that's, that's very reasonable because, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the ability for Paladin to do damage from hand is just non existent, basically. But again, like the Fighter Blast. <laughs> okay, fireball. Oh, you can okay. fireball. Maybe that's but more. How do you feel about a fireball and a ping? But it, it, it might even be better to keep the fireball than the pyroblast in some cases, because like Antonite is the win condition anyway. The paladin is already at 32 HP and has a light well, so I don't think the pyroblast <laughs> is a win condition in this case. It's such a rare situation. But you just can't forgive yourself oh. if you ever get the pyroblast. Wow. A, uh, oh, a... maybe pyroblast on the mysterious challenge was good, because now you can fireball the loot up. It's a yep. pretty reasonable. <laughs> so now you can't play anything. Uh, 15 mana Pyroblast. Oh. I mean, the good news for Nice is the block didn't get popped, I guess. Yes, sure. So if, if he gets an Alex Thrust from the top, he Frost could still bolt. turn this around. Okay, this is. But because of the Lothab, yeah, mm -hmm. can't actually cast the, the Frost Bolt. Because, I mean, assuming Lothab wasn't there, assuming that was just like a, I don't know, like a Stranglethorn Tiger that wasn't stealth, okay. you could freeze that, you could start generating fireballs and hope that that Archmage lives and you just keep chaining fireballs. And it does seem like the Archmage is going to live if that was the case, but right. no, it's a Lothab. This is a slightly different case, and if Nias plays it down, he understands that he's going to lose that Archmage. And at that point, what does your win condition actually become? Alex Straza, go yeah. face four times. Five times. <laughs> There's Five 37 times. health. You're correct. Yeah. So with this, Nias can pop the block and still get rid of the Archmage, though. So. Yep. Uh, dark times for the Freeze Mage player. Absolutely. That Alex Raza almost feels like it's going to come down to whether or not he draws it if he wants to win this. So, Speech, based on your knowledge of competitive Hearthstone, when you bring Freeze Mage, what are you actually targeting? What are you, what are you looking? Is it just purely aggressive decks? Well, I like playing against aggressive decks a lot as a freeze mage. It's uh, it's some of the best ones, but but any deck that that uh, that works in a way where they first have to put minions on the board, like for example, mid range paladin, that's also a good matchup. 
but decks that deal damage from the hand, for example, even even a rogue with uh, with the oil flurry and all that kind of stuff can be can be kind of tricky. Rogue not the worst matchup, but Druid deals 14 from the hand even more if there's minions on the on the board already. Um, decks that put minions on the board first are the difficult ones. It's not nice That's there. Easy. Actually, he pretty much got exactly what he needed to stay in this game, which was that blizzard. Yeah. He put yep. in the block. And uh, this block is not going to get pop popped either. This Zoro is wow. kind of out of resources at this point. Uh, he is, yeah. but there are still true silver champions <laughs> remaining, I'm sure. The original Noble Sacrifice is still up, so, so Zoro yeah. can't actually play it. Yeah, I wonder what the card count is, because it does seem like that the Paladin has less of a deck than the Freeze Mage. Oh my oh, gosh, do you Frostbolt? The, yeah, you just you can't let that block get popped. As amazing as it is, Nias is still in this. He could draw that Alex Strauss at any moment. Right. Wow, he even plays down the The Doomsayer <laughs> yeah. kills the Light Well, right? Another useless Secret Keeper. Zoro was really looking for a weapon here. Any weapon would have been good yeah. to be able to buff that Ice Block. And he can't even play the Noble Sacrifice because there's already one up. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing he can do this time, just bad. This is, this is very suddenly turned into a slap fight now where it's you know, everyone's kind of like looking okay. for that one thing. Alex Strauss would be great. Uh, that's Mitch not Dallas the right legendary. Helps you find Alex Straza though. But it also helps yeah, you get to fatigue oh, for sooner. It's seven cards right now for the Freeze Mage. And for the oh, Paladin, Alex. it's five oh, cards. There's, okay, there's Alex. There's the Alex. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, oh, no! That certainly that's helps. That's really good. Yeah, Zora will be able to block the block now. Mm -hmm. But Nias has the Alex Straza ready right. and waiting. He has the Alex Straza. But now the thing is, if Zora kills the Alex Straza, that's game. Yeah. Because uh, there's no more threats for Nias, and there's 37 health, right? That noble correct. Sacrifice is about to be huge. It is. Into second Noble Sacrifice. And the oh, kill bot. Oh, kill bot. Wow. Yeah, you definitely go Alex Strauss first, though. No doubt about it. Getting that 8-8 eight eight over the 3-3. That oh, that's a pretty good draw. Uh, he's going to have to put his put faith in the light. In the yeah, that's... that's uh, <laughs> that's quite a reliable place, bro. Wow, what a grind <laughs> That's fest. a good place to put your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Among other options. Yeah. Uh, so Nias continues to be there. I mean, it's important to O. Oh. <laughs> it's important to O. Oh. oh, it's important to O. Oh. Uh, but, you know, obviously Freeze Mage doesn't run Polymorph. No. So getting rid of... Uh, and, er, that would have been a good check card. Right. If you're expecting a lot of Tyrion Forderings. Right. Yeah. But I don't think uh, Nias imagined this uh, game to go this way, right? Usually, no. Freeze Mage does kill Paladin quite easily with the right draws, but there were just too many secrets in Nias' hand at the beginning. It went so long. I remember uh, way back in the day, I was watching actually Reels uh, prior to him joining the Hearthstone team. Sure. He was streaming and he was playing Freeze Mage, and just, I've never played Freeze Mage at, at that point, so I was kind of watching him and learning from him, and he was just like, yeah, you know, sometimes you need cards in a different order when it comes to Freeze Mage to, to deal with the board, and. You know, you, you try to put in a lot of stuff that cycles, a lot of card draw, but yeah, if you don't get it when you need it, it, it can be very difficult, especially like against a deck like Secret Paladin, which just mm -hmm. piles on the pressure. Absolutely. The mid-range stats are brutal. Me it does remind me of the old patron deck, right? The cards need to come in the right order. Or maybe even the new one. I mean, that's the nature of combo decks in general, though, which, right. I mean, Freeze Mage at the end is all about comboing those spells down. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be a little bit finicky. Oh, forced to draw here from Nias. Oh, oh man. I was, yeah, he's going to go ahead and pass it up. And Zoro's going to take game one uh, and have a 1 0 lead over Nias. I was actually starting to wonder if there was some universe where he just didn't have Arcane Intellect. Because we just obviously he has to have it. No. Sure. But like we just hadn't seen it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a mage, you, you got to be able to go through your deck fast. And even though he only draws two cards, it's also like kind of one card out of the deck. So it's kind of three in one. So it thins the deck quite efficiently, allowing you to draw into your Alex Raza faster. Right, Freeze Mage kind of having a rough day uh, so far. Right. You know, kind of running into these decks that just put out a lot of pressure, and it's not just like Zoo or something where you can just lock it down, or even that Grindier Shaman. Although, obviously, we saw yesterday, uh, Shaman apparently pretty good against Freeze Mage. Yeah, exactly. And one of the problems now for Nias is that his Freeze Mage is still have to get a win, right? Mm. And it's against Druid and Hunter, two very, very hard matchups. Yeah, it's going to only get harder for me. That was the best matchup he had for the Freeze Mage. It's not impossible against the Hunter, for example. It's not too bad of a matchup, but uh, it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. Right, and so for Zoro, this is, uh, you know, he comes in, he plays against one of the best from the Americas region, and, you know, 1-0 in this series. And we actually had a chance to sit down and talk to him about the origin of the, the gamer tag Zoro. Uh 
啊，如果我夺得了这次嘉年华的冠军，拿到这笔奖金，我会去买一下，就是我一的来源的周楼这个动漫人物，呃，买一下他的衣服啊、刀啊，来武装一下自己我。Right, so big, uh, big anime fan, big fan of uh One Piece, and big fan of dressing up as a、uh, as anime character. So, I say, I respect him as a fellow role player. <laughs> Uh, I'm always down for for some role play. I guess the costume costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, there's only one way I can get it, and that's if I win BlizzCon.、Mm -hmm. So yeah, I gotta wonder how expensive that costume is. But、uh, Nice now, yeah, as you pointed out, Nice has some options as far as how he wants to approach the series. Yep.、Uh, both Freeze Mage is gonna have to get that win at some point if he wants to advance from the series. Yep. Both players with hunters, and they, it could be any kind of hunters. That's true. It's、There's... impossible to know if they're playing face or mid range. I don't know what what decks these players in particular prefer. Right. But... We've seen face kind of become a lot more popular since、uh, the Warzone Commander change because it doesn't necessarily expect to run into these really anti aggro decks. Although, a lot of players have brought some. Yeah, and I mean, lots of one health creatures are really weak to warrior with death spite and stuff like that. So,、uh, and now that patron has fallen out of favor a little bit.、Uh, don't tell, don't tell Europe that. Sure. Right,、we、but Jay always do see a decline of warriors. So, yeah, face hunter will be really good. But here we're gonna see a druid mirror instead. All right. So, yeah, druid mirror.、Uh, what do you think? And it's obviously a pretty straightforward answer here, but <laughs> Amaz, what do you think is the most important、uh, aspect of the Druid Mirror? Oh, the most important aspect is starting with Innervate. <laughs> yeah. Because、uh, it is actually better than Wild Growth when you have a minion hitting their face constantly, as opposed to waiting to get a bigger minion on the board. So usually, the first person to play something on the board is like a big favorite. The other person has to react to it, and then because Druids can only either play minions or play spells,、uh, it just you know. Keeps on, you keep on stomping with pressure. Does,、so、pressure, yes. does living roots count? <laughs> <laughs> two one ones is two damage. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, that's mana that has to be put into clearing those, unless you're looking to get off the tail end of the swipe. Exactly.、Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, speaking of living roots here, this is one of those cards where some druid players will include one of、mm -hmm. uh, to deal with aggro, which again, you know, you kind of expected to see at this tournament, or even just to push your own agenda in the druid mirror. And again, this is mana that we see Zoro investing to deal with it. Zoro's hand also kind of has the unique,、uh, the tech card, Harrison Jones.、Mm -hmm. So maybe you're expecting to run into more Secret Paladin,、uh, the Hunters,、yep. the Control Warrior. Harrison Jones obviously has a lot of value, and I think is one of the most comfortable tech cards in Druid. I'm a tiny bit surprised to see the Hero Power from Zoro on turn two because of just just based on how his hand looks like, he had no play for turn three at all,、mm -hmm. and、uh, that brought well, it can deal with an Aspirant, so. It's not like a, it's directly a mistake to keep it, but、uh, another just a hero power from、uh, from Zoro here.、Wow. That was four mana to deal with a、uh, one mana living root. So yeah, that,、uh, that card did some work for Nias, and Nias playing Druid of the Saber. So that's a card we don't see a ton of.、Uh, Savits, what do you think? Yeah, it looks like one of those more aggressive lists. He does have those.、Uh, Those powerful minions too, and this almost certainly going to be the Emperor Thorison for another Druid player without any minions on the board. It's extremely difficult to remove. Almost a double rod is required, and the silence on it. Well, it's still a five-five. I guess the only saving grace for Zoro here, looking at the Emperor, is that it only reduces two cards effectively. Innovate doesn't get like negative one. Oh yeah, that、anything. is true. But yeah, definitely still a very very bad position. I mean, if I'm Zora at this point, I would just、uh, you know ping down to three two, because you know cards are already reduced anyways. Your opponent should be playing more cards next turn, so you know might as well just you know leave it. But this is actually gonna get rewarded because he's this next turn is gonna be Innervate Ancient of Lore,、wow. so he would have got more cards to get discounted. Yeah, the value from the from the Emperor on this turn would have been、uh, even more than on the previous one. And I like the turn from Zoro. I mean, he gets rid of the Emperor Thoris, and he puts a two-four on the board when you're just staring down a three-two.、Mm -hmm. uh, Nias, you know, he's gonna make、uh, Zoro do the trade. He's just gonna put in three damage, and getting the damage in in,、uh, in this mirror match is very important. And it's it's a little bit deceptive because obviously you're trying to get them to that certain threshold where you can just combo them down, not even necessarily with Force of Nature and Savage Roar, but just Savage Roar and like two or three minions on the board. So getting in that chip damage early on feels really important. Right, exactly. When you're like sub 15 or sub 14, even you're always afraid of dying. So that you always have to be pressured to clear the board. Yeah, we see Zoro is already down to 17 health. Right.、Uh, with a 5-5 on board, to which Zoro has no answer. At the This mirror match is kind of like starting the game at 16 health each, right? Kind of. If you, kind if of. you get that 16 damage, I guess you,、uh, you know, in a very, very good spot. Things are looking amazing for Nias right now. He's, he's able to push his opponent down to already 12 with just the edge of the floor on the board and has the combo ready and waiting. He will need some more mana, and、uh, there will be no more wild throws, but. 
So the Aspirant might just uh, speed up. I say, this is the first non innervate uh, Mana Ram card we're seeing in this mirror. So no Wild Gross uh, prior to this. No Darnassus Aspirant is a very honest game, aside, you know, from Innervate, right. which is a very dishonest card. But, oh, speaking Here's of... Here's an Innervate. <laughs> yeah, so if you're... Zoro here, how do you speech, how do you look to get back into this game when you're staring down this much pressure on I, I start looking at the Shredder. You always look at the Shredder. <laughs> I agree. So I would uh, just Roar hero savage power. Roar hero back to the Shredder. <laughs> Hope for a birthday party. I mean, <laughs> what else can he do? There's a birthday party in that Shredder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, okay. uh, if he... Happy birthday. Like just <laughs> just removing the Ancient of Lore, the only way to do it is that use, by using your own face. Because mm -hmm. it happens only once like every 255 days. This might be the day. Where's the birthday party in the Shredder? Yep. I'm down. Let's check. <laughs> okay. Love birthday parties. Well, let's see if oh, Zora does it. Zora might think he might find another way out of this, but yeah. it's looking I mean, pretty he, hard. He could Ancient of Lore to heal for five. Uh, but which just oh. doesn't. Again, yeah. It's like, yes, I mean, he could still innervate. He could so innervate to heal. He basically <laughs> heals for nothing. <laughs> okay. But he gets to put a 5 5 on the board and get rid of the, the damaged Ancient of Lore. It, it, I mean, suboptimal plays all around. Yeah, right. so it's, is he doing it? He's going to draw cards oh, and look for the Wrath, maybe? And nope. no, and good. that should be it with six power on the board and an additional seven from either the roar or the nature. He can uh, Nias can just pick the pick the card that he wants. Right, he's going to tie things up. This would be exactly lethal. Yep. So nice. He's going to tie up the series. Oh, he could have he even had the living roots damage for two if he wanted. He was running two copies, which is interesting. But yeah, yeah he's going to tie the series uh, one one off the the back of the druid mirror. Very swingy matchup. Uh, and yeah, well played by him. Interesting cool, uh, uh, druid list from Nias. He, wa he wasn't playing the acro version, but he was still running double living roots and the druid of the saber. Does uh, respect a lot of aggro decks coming oh, yeah. here, yeah. Living roots, one of the best things you can do against something like a hunter on early on. Right, especially against the one health minions, it does clear two things, whereas Absolutely. a wrath actually only clears one. Yeah, uh, against some control decks, it can be a problem to have that top decking it on turn eight feels pretty bad. Well, but yeah. against Paladin, against Face Hunter, in those matches, it can absolutely win the game. Well, we saw even at the America's Championship, Nias is one of those players who doesn't necessarily just subscribe to the idea that you find a list on, you know, like Hearthbone or something and just like plug it in and play it. He likes to tinker around. He was running a refreshment vendor in his hand lock deck, and he kind of enjoys these, these not, I would say, like different or unique cards, just ones that aren't necessarily being run or thought of as, you know, particularly powerful in any given deck. So uh, obviously it panned out for him, and those living roots uh, early on really gave him command of the board and allowed him to build. Yeah, it didn't deal that much damage, but that four mana that was spent on just clearing those, it's definitely meaningful. Mm -hmm. right. He out-tempoed his opponent big time in that game. Right, and uh, I think, I will say though that uh, now that other people watching, the other players watching the stream have had the opportunity to see that he has two living roots, and he also has the Druid of the Saber, it's kind of one of those things where it'll be interesting to see if in the long haul, that's a better overall choice for his deck, or if he was going for more kind of an element of surprise thing against, as you guys pointed out, more of the aggressive decks he's planning on running into here. Yep, it's interesting to see if uh, if the remaining lineup from Nias is also targeted at more aggressive decks, if he has made similar choices to maybe try 3-0 somebody's base hunter. Well, speaking of aggressive decks, uh, Nias is actually going to bring out his hunter, uh, which looks at the moment to be more of the mid-range variant. Mm -hmm. Right, good so hybrid. Yeah, is the big clue. and. Right now, Nias has to decide whether he wants to go for a uh, coin animal companion into animal companion, and he decides to keep only ones to, you know, no. maybe try mad no. sciences or two drops, something like that. Yeah, with the coin, quite often you want to maybe coin out the two drop and follow it up with another two drop. We see an arcane golem, so Nias probably going for a more uh, hybrid approach. Oh, wow. in mid range hunter, that's not a card you commonly see. There is, as a hunter player, there's just no scarier turn than coining out the knife juggler when you're playing yep. against a druid, because you know you're just begging for the keeper of the grove. And there you go. They, they get it very, very often, right? It's a two card combo very that's early on, too. Oh, yes. Well, there's always this working theory that like every warrior hand came standard with a fiery war axe. As oh. a hunter player, I'm positive that every single druid uh, hand comes with innervate keeper of the grove. <laughs> Quite powerful indeed. Uh, plays the Mad Scientist, probably going to be a Freezing Trap, but it could be something else too. That Arcane Golem is... Uh... I wouldn't be surprised with Nias if it's something like Bear Trap, uh, possibly Snake oh, Trap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is it, Bear Trap is great because it offers tempo. Sure. Uh, if you, if the last thing your opponent does on the turn is like swing right. into the face, and the Bear Trap pops, you start the next turn with a 3-3 Beast, which obviously enable kill, or enables Kill Command. If there's Houndmaster, you can just go ahead and buff it up. Uh, Isha, not great here because of the tempo Big game hunter play from Zora, which is very heads up. 
Right. As opposed to even mess with the traps. But now it's really interesting, right? Do you attack with the BGH first right. because it might be a freezing trap, or do you have to keep it the girl first? If it's a snake trap, you just killed your own two too. Yeah, I, he could, I could see it go either way. The problem here is that he can't really play any minion from his hand. He only has those two spells available to him, and swipe on just that bear. It doesn't feel all that great. This is uh, this is truly one of those times where you never feel good about the play you make until it works out, and then you're like, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. All right, let's see. Yeah, okay, so this is oh. just a freezing trap. Yep, so now he's pretty much forced to use this wipe. Yeah. Valuing the uh, BGish as a turn 5 play, perhaps, if he doesn't draw it, or, you know, maybe against Dr. Boom. Yeah, example. that's actually he... not too bad. I mean, it's not the 5 drop you want to play. It's not the turn 5 you want, but he had no other turn 5. Right. We see both copies of Unleash the Hounds and Nias's hand, and uh, against Druid, you don't necessarily tend to get huge Unleash the Hounds turns. It's usually something like one to three uh, hounds, oh, yeah. which doesn't feel as good. Um, so yeah, he ended up, or Zora, as you guys pointed out, goes for that uh, the second time around Tempo Big Game Hunter. Wow, wow that's Too a bear. lot that's... of damage. Uh, Nias is looking all right on the board, but the, those double locking columns are not exactly what he was hoping to get right now. But he, he's probably, if there's situations down the road where he has options to either go for a clear or go for face, with this hand, he's certainly going to favor going for face. This is, uh, yeah, Sylvanas no is going to come down. That feels like a pretty easy read. Uh, and that's just going to complicate things for Nias even more. Yep. It's all because of that Innervate Keeper of the Grove. Right. That just, that starts it. Uh, once Hunter kind of gets pushed off the board and has to try to battle for it against the Druid, the quality of the Druid minions is usually just higher until you get to something like Savannah High Man. Yeah, the Keeper of the Grove just trades for so much. It killed the Night Juggler, it traded for Mad Sciences, and now it's still a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, so he's going to see if he can, uh... Yep. Oh, this is awesome. Just, oh, going, just for it. going for the face. Well, look at his hand. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two arcane golems and a quick shot. You got to know when to go. And I do <laughs> like the kill command there because you want the quick shot to, you know, cycle for something. Usually, yeah. you, you want a hero power, right? Hero power and using the kill command is kind of like the same damage. Uh, you know, you, you, you're doing three damage with the kill command plus a two from the beast where you could have got with your hero power anyways. I mean, for a second there, I thought he was just going to play the hounds what? and then kill command the Sylvanas oh. to try to trade for one of the hounds. Okay. But if he... If Zora had gotten the Shredder, it's kind of basically over from there. That's yeah. true. And even the Hounds, because it has Charge, doesn't feel... Well, I guess Charge doesn't factor in, but it's still a 1-1. One, one. At the end of the day, face damage is very relevant, so might as well hit the face. Yeah, especially with two Arcane Golems in this hand. We see here, uh, I think Zoro might actually just be threatening lethal. Yeah, this is a lot of damage with Savage Roar. Savage Roar. Savage Roar deals yeah. 8 damage. Should do it if uh, Nias doesn't get more stuff cleared off the board. He can go for the juggler and uh, potentially hit a juggle on the Keeper of the Grove. Important to note, if he Arcane Golems, he actually put Zoro on the combo. I won. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, uh, you can't really go on. Nice is kind of uh, on an escalator to nowhere right now, uh, playing against a Druid who has two uh, Force of Natures and a Savage Roar in hand. All right, so he's going to quick shot here. If he plays the Arca Arcane Golem... Uh, yeah, he's going to lose the game. <laughs> it will be dead. Ooh, oh, that's a oh. That is great. That Thanks was perfect. Right that is outstanding for him. Ooh, second keeper. Of the knife juggler on board. Second keeper of the grove. Wow. What is this agenda against knife jugglers? <laughs> I think we should be asking you this question. Uh, I know nothing. My hands are clean here. <laughs> I'm a hunter player. So okay. Cool. So I have similar situations. Like when I play a Dr. Boo, my opponent always gets the big damn hunter. And so Boo always kill Azure Drake. Yes. There's a lot of uh, patterns we're seeing. There, I don't Robert. know what you're accusing me of. Mm, I don't uh, know. I'm a. Oh, oh is this it? Oh, no, it's, no, it's one man off. One, one man, off. man at all. Oh no. That is just too bad. So close, but so far. And Nias has played this so well. Uh, he needs to arcing call of both creatures to stay alive. <laughs> There's no way he can do that. Play. He's never going to win oh, the game. This goes back to playing to win. Yeah. Right? Not mean, to lose. You can't not to not do lose. that move. Yeah. I mean, we can see that that would be the only play to keep him in the game, but if you need us, like, Oof. Just, no, it's not happening. Might as well play one Arcane Golem. Keep yeah. the second one for the abusive to proc it. And hope for the best, right? Yeah. Hope for the best. Get in there and fight! Gets the six damage to base, leaving Zoro down to four, but four is enough. Force of Nage, Savage Throw are more than enough to end it. Zoro spots it very quickly. Obviously, he's had those cards in hand for a while now, so... Uh, Zoro's gonna take a lead in the series 2-1. Nice, very polite. Well played. Very very nice guy in general, so obviously that's a well played. Yep, we don't see much emotes uh, in these matches usually, but... 
No. Well played, Tim. Yeah, second to Hotform beforehand, he promised me there was going to be a lot of apologizing, and I, I don't feel like I saw enough apologizing at <laughs> Hotform, so very disappointed. But I guess he didn't have anything to apologize for. Yeah, he's like, I, I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do see the, the well plays come out. Two players who obviously have a lot of respect for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, Zoro's going to go up 2-1 and just has to get that win on his Hunter now. Yep, only Hunter left and Nias with Hunter and the Mage. Yep. And uh, the Mage was the Freeze oh, Mage, freeze so, mage so that might be alright against the Hunter. D yeah. It depends what sort of uh, Hunter Zoro is running. If it's exactly. a face Hunter, the, the Freeze is definitely going to be stronger than against the midrange. We did see, uh, to be fair, the, the face Hunter earlier beat out the Freeze Mage. It's definitely... That is true. It's definitely possible based on how quickly the face Hunter does damage. Yeah, but the, the problem is that like the, the reason why Freeze Mage is usually favored against the face Hunter is that the, the face Hunter has very limited amount of damage. And quite often, if there's an Ice Barrier, or maybe even two, it's impossible for the Hunter to have enough damage to end the game early. Yeah, it seems like that the face Hunter does need to end the game before Alex Reza and before those, you know, heal bots come into play. Right. So, um, yeah, it really depends on timing of stuff. That said, what it does have in its favor is the fact that a lot of its minions have charge. So the whole uh, Freeze Mage agenda of slowing down the board and just stopping minions from attacking, not usually as effective. Uh, that said, they do have some minions, you know, Mad Scientist, uh, Worgen Infiltrators, kind of these minions that can be slowed down or just straight up killed by, you know, spells like Blizzard or... Uh, I've seen Freeze Mages before just play down a Doomsayer on an empty board. Just uh, basically like, please don't play any minions. But. And we are going to see here uh, the Hunter into the Freeze Mage. Yep. So Based on Zoro's starting hand, we can't quite tell just yet which, uh, which version it is. Yeah, there are some mid-range Hunters who run Abusive Sergeants. But now... Oh, wow. wow! Clockwork No. <laughs> More one-drops. This is what we're uh, leading towards in this uh, BlizzCon World Championship opening week. He's got, he's got a very good opening hand, too. You can just straight up coin out the Worgen Infiltrator Clockwork. No. Yeah. Uh, Double one drops trap. Is the dream. Not something you want to see against a Freeze Mage, as a Freeze Mage usually is not attacking into your face until it late in the game with spells. Uh, but otherwise... <laughs> please be Lock and Load, please be Lock and Load. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unlikely. Lock and Load would go well with those spare parts. I, I had some fun with uh, that type of deck, but it, it's not for this type of uh, Ooh, stage. and then oh, yeah, oh, Silence the... Sounds mad scientist there. Yep. I continue to be super impressed with the, uh, the players from, from China. Uh, in the Asia Pacific region, who are bringing all these unique techs into the pre existing decks. And, you know, you talk to him after. I talked to Pipping Ho last night after the match, and, and he was explaining that, you know, with mid range Hunter and Fell Reaver, he was just like, yeah, Fell Reaver does a lot of damage. Uh, as a Hunter, you want to do a lot of damage. Makes sense. It is <laughs> the five drop minion that has the most stats. Right. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing players not afraid to kind of mix up what the established variants are, you know, especially in the Western scene. So. Speaking of which, this Clockwork Gnome might just get a reversing switch and kill a Doomsayer off. Wow, that happens one out of seven times. <laughs> <laughs> More uh, than you think. Yeah. yeah. That's very relevant, actually, in this matchup, because Doomsayer is one of those cards that mm -hmm. you really need to kind of hold the line for you while you get to those anti-kill bots, get to those Alex Drazas. We do see Nias has a fair amount of healing in hand, assuming he can get to turn nine, which, as you pointed out, usually if the Freeze Mage can get to turn nine and get that Alex Draz off, that's kind of the end of the game for the yeah. Face Hunter. It is, it really is. Uh, and there's a heal bot, so they, with that heal bot and the ice block, the chances for Nias to make it to turn 9 are quite good at this point. A little bit surprised Zoro didn't go for the animal companion there. It's a tiny bit awkward with the mana for now. He could, like, he wouldn't uh, play the animal companion and hero power or the juggler. He, he could play the juggler and just hero power. Right, and this is a turn where, as a face hunter, you usually want to try to weave in your hero power as much as possible oh, yeah. and be as mana efficient as you can. So while animal companion could produce, uh, well, will produce Huffer, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe this time you just play the knife juggler and you hear power, which is right. what uh, Zoro opts to do. Yep. Another uh, interesting thing is if you have four minions on the board and you get a Leoc, the Leoc is basically a Huffer, right? It deals four damage. Without the cool Huffer noise. Yeah, well, well, the cool <laughs> Leoc noise. Eh. No? Eh. Cool Leoc noise. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we can just agree that Misha is, you know, a face hunter's worst. Nightmare. Is it happening? Is it happening? Oh, oh. No. Uh, that would have been really good. Yeah. Ooh, and so okay, what uh, what would he have to? If he gets anything but Misha, he can technically clear. I believe. That's true. Yeah. Even if he gets Misha, he could clear with two juggles. All right. So so long as the card doesn't give him Misha. But Misha is fine too. If he needs, just needs two juggles. Yeah. But okay. no, it's fine. We got it. We heard the cool Leoc noise of Oz. Wow. He just went all face. face. He doesn't right. have time to trade. No, no, no. trading, man. But Nias with that heal, but ready and waiting, is not too worried about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame Zoro for that line of play. Uh, it makes sense. 
<laughs> for what he's trying to do. Okay, go kinda face. Has to, yeah, kind of has to take some chances. And here's the problem with Explosive Trap, is that <laughs> it stops your quick shot from drawing a card. Ooh. Yeah, and it's been a get cloak feels not exactly yeah. what you want. <laughs> you can't actually <laughs> stealth the organ just yet, so. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Uh, basically, he attacks with the organ, then re-stealths it. Mm. Uh -huh. No. But no. you can't stealth a stealth creature? No, no, no. You, I don't think you can. The, it wasn't lit up. That I saw. Oh, maybe you just play it too fast and end the turn. This is a Jeopardino question. This <laughs> is, yeah. I'm actually not sure now that you mentioned it. What I think you still can. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you can. And we'll see if, see if it's lit up. Okay. We'll see if it's lit up. I, I think you can. No, oh, I'm, wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I get a totem point. You get a totem point. We'll give you an honorary totem <laughs> point. So now you, myself, and Crip are tied. All right. Still, still two more days. Oh, there's so much damage. With a quick shot, he can actually push Nias down two HP right now, which would leave him dead to the explosive trap. Yeah. Hey, you which... never know. Nias might mess up and go like, I will proc this freezing trap first with yeah. my anti kill bot. Yeah. And then I'm dead. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen two organ infiltrators. I will proc this freezing trap. Yeah. Uh, what? What doesn't sound right about that sentence? Yeah. <laughs> well, as low as Nias is right now, he does have that ice block in his hand, and for next turn, the Alexstrasza is there. So as long as he doesn't attack face this <laughs> turn, he should be doing quite all right. Right. He's thinking about what he wants to do. Obviously, the ice block has to come down. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. And he's honestly he's sitting pretty. He has Alexstrasza next turn. He's got, you know, some... Yeah, he's got some aha going so a lot of them actually yeah yep oh, yep cranks up the pressure here no because he obviously since he's alex rousing himself he just needs to start pushing that damage though so. and uh obviously zora has no answer to that nope aha uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, let's see that's gonna be a good one guess on mystic would have been quite uh, a good one flare <laughs> yes flare yeah. actually could have been that's yeah, it's possible zora is learning a flare. i was gonna say uh obviously we've talked about the fact that they love those tech cards yeah. So Flare, Flare is uh, definitely a tech card. So yep. maybe it just didn't draw it. Maybe it's in the deck. Very could well, be. could be. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen uh, we've seen crazier stuff over the course of the first two days of the Hearthstone World Championship. I mean, we saw a Clockwork Gnome. Anybody, anything could be in the deck. Clockwork Gnome's crazy. Yeah. I actually, uh, I often wonder why players don't run it because I feel like it's very solid in the Face Hunter list, mm -hmm. and you know, you can get stuff like the plus one attack. Oh, sure. Hard. I guess the main drawback is that it does give you a card, thereby making push shot a little bit uh, worse. Fair. Perhaps. All right, so for Zoro, he's in a very bad place right now. I'm pretty sure he's actually just dead next turn if he doesn't somehow find a way to clear the board. Mm -hmm. 15 damage in the hand, both Antoninus and the Alexstrasza connecting the face. That's yeah. an additional 13, so 27 damage. Look at my, my I am two for two on math today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I went home last night, looked at some books, learned some math, <laughs> feel ready to cast today. All he's right. gonna... Going for the unleash. I, I respect this. Never trade. Always face, even into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> and Just oh. oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> well, that uh, doesn't really matter. That doesn't matter at the end, <laughs> but it, it's kind of funny. It's a, good, it's a good way to go out. Yep. Zoro shaking his head, kind of kind of smiling even a little bit. Sometimes you just got to play out your cards. And if only that was a uh, reversing switch, things would have been a bit different. <sighs> yep. Clockwork Gnome, you had one job. Which was to get the one and seven draw of the reverse switch. But yeah, Nias is gonna go ahead and tie up this series, so we are going to a game five with the Hunter Mirror. And uh, I believe Nias' uh, Hunter had the, the double arcane yeah. golem. Kind right. of some, yeah, but it so. also had high man in it, so it was a little bit slower version than the one that Zoro is running with the right. with the multiple one drops and the explosive drops. So this is this is uh, actually my time to shine now. Uh, oh. I say yeah, face hunter versus uh, slower hunters. I usually give it to the face hunter. So okay, and why is that, Robert? Uh, because you do damage faster. Oh, okay. And in <laughs> Nice's deck, we didn't see like a Houndmaster, which can be really problematic for the face hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm open to disagreement, though. Tell me what you guys think. I agree with you. I, I think the faster the hunter is, the better it does in the in the mirror match. Usually, ju just based on how the hero powers work and how how poorly the the slower hunter can defend against the aggressive uh, chargers. Right. Even, the, even those traps, you have the, you have the freezing traps, they're not so good against the small minions from the hunter. Maybe unleash the hounds. One of the easiest ways to deal with the freezing trap, while explosive trap takes out a lot of stuff. Right? Yeah. Mas, exactly. what do you think? Yeah, exactly. You just need to kill your opponent before he, they do you, right? It's a hunter, it's racing. Yeah. If you're one turn ahead, then you win. It's important to note, I, I only asked because I felt like you guys would agree with me. <laughs> I didn't Let's feel like I'd look hunt. silly. No, no, no. You, you were pretty I sure of yourself. You Confidence. Down. Confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see Nias' opening hand. He does have that Savannah high main. 
Obviously, that's not something you tend to see in the Face Hunter deck. Nope. Uh, in fact, it's it's usually the determining factor in differentiating the decks. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoro's opening hand, though, not really what you want. It's, it's not at all what he wants. Well, actually, Zoro kept the Abusive Sergeant just so he can play something. It's really yeah. hard for Hunters to deal one damage to one minion. Yeah, it's uh, it's also worth noting that when you're mulliganing as a, as a Face Hunter and you're going first and you have the coin, you will often keep the Abusive Sergeant just to guarantee you have something to do. Exactly. Because mana utilization is so important as the Face Hunter. Yeah, yeah. it's extremely important to have that one drop. Ooh. You would have preferred to have any of the other one drops, but still, that Abusive is so much better than not playing it. And oh, this Glazooka is going to punish the only one one drop from uh, VS. He could have uh, coined, you know, two things for the Mad Sciences. But with this play, uh, he, you know, made Zora um, have a 3 1 Abusive Sergeant stick around. Yep, and that Abusive is going to. Deal six damage. All right, let's see. This animal companion could work out pretty poorly. Mishima would probably be the best one. Oh. Leok, uh, not that good in this situation. It's it's good, obviously, because it, it can trade and it has value because it'll stay on the sure. board. But trading really doesn't matter all that much, as we were talking about. It's, it's all about just getting that damage in there. There you go, all face. Soro's doing it right. He oh. gets it. <laughs> the Soro bow, though, the Glazuka, it could be saved to kill the Leoc later because you do want your face to trade for minions while your minions do the damage, right? Um, that's how you get Temple. Uh, Temple doesn't really matter too much in this matchup, but you know it still matters in the first five turns. He could keep it. He doesn't have another weapon in his hand right now, but also attacking with it right now in case he draws another one can be beneficial. I like that both uh, Zoro and Daiming have been running the Wolf Rider over the Argent Horse Rider. I think mean, it's that's very interesting. I I really want to ask both players their thoughts on that because obviously uh, Wolf Rider does one more point of damage, which very important. But the Argent Horse Rider is super difficult to remove. That's true uh, for a lot of decks. So very interesting to catch up with them after and kind of get their opinions. Uh, for Nias, he's forced to clear. But he's in that he's on the back foot, which is what you tend to see as a slower hunter. That's right. You can't really race at this point. Yeah, at least the house would have been pretty good so that, you know, you can turn the board around. But now, to turn the board around, he needs to take another three damage to the face. So that Wolf Rider effectively was a fireball that removes the durability from your opponent's weapon. Wow. And the Abusive also dealt so much damage. Even though it might look, for some of the newer players, you might look at the, oh, there's a battle cry, buff a minion. Why, why, why? I'm wasting that. But it doesn't really matter. It was still so much damage. Yeah, we see uh, Leprechaun come down, and Zoro's hand, despite having the really hot early start, I mean, he has the quick shots in hand, which yeah, they do damage, but they don't really put anything on the board, and Zoro wants to force Nias to deal with the board at this point, mm -hmm. uh, because Nias is just not in a position to race at all. Yeah, even so, let's go into the Ooh. face, because Freezing Trap is actually going to remove the uh, damage from Leprechaun, right? If you kill it, it still deals two yeah. damage, but if you freeze it, uh, it's gone for a while. Yeah, and suddenly this game's a little bit more complicated now for Zoro. Uh, it really has to... Measure out. I'm, I'm sure he understands, obviously, based on playing Nias' uh, deck already once, that this is Freezing Trap. Oh, yeah. He, so knows, it's, it's freezing. he knows that Leprechaun is coming back to hand, and then has to decide from there, does he Leprechaun quick shot? What does he do? He's going to be giving Nias another charge on the Eagle Horn there. Yeah, I don't think you attack with Leprechaun at all. It's such a big deal to give that extra charge. Might as well do it later. Yeah. yeah. And basically, uh, Nias only actually has six health right now because of the double quick shot in hand. Mm -hmm. So. Zoro doesn't need to do too much more damage to, to get to where he wants to go. I wonder if Nias can actually outrace his opponent by uh, minion combat, you know? I was looking at this, he has Leoc on the board. Like, this is actually... I feel like he has to try. <laughs> he has to just uh, slam the Ar the Arcane Golem and go for it, right? Uh, yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, do you hero power? Yeah, this is an interesting question now. So with the additional two mana, would you guys Mad Scientist, Haunted Creeper, or Hero Power? The uh, Mad Scientist does have a possibility of dealing yeah. three damage. And if the Leoc dies, it still does two damage, right? So maybe the Mad Scientist is a little bit better? I, I think you isolate the, the Scientist here and just kill off the Lepernome. Try to get that uh, Scientist uh, frozen. So in the end, like now using the Leoc of the Lepernome. This is great. You, you really don't want to see that explosive trap. And he's going to go for it. Deals with that. And Zoro really looking for Unleash the Hounds from the top. This is a this is a great game five. It just comes down now. They're both racing. Ooh. Oh, Unleash the Hounds totally changes up the game. Wait, that isn't okay. That isn't lethal. That is one damage one off lethal. One damage actually. off from lethal yeah. right now. Thanks, Freezing Trap. But he can get the explosion. <laughs> no, but it's still one off because then they misses some damage on the face. Well, it doesn't matter because Unleash the Hounds could proc the Freezing Trap. Then yeah. the Mad Scientist could trade for the Arcane Golem. And then you can get a oh, explosive yeah. trap, and that's two damage, anyways. It's not a problem being uh, being a little bit off, anyway, because uh, like uh, there's no way for Nias to kill him next time. Mm -hmm. right, so we're gonna see Unleash the Hounds, uh, as you brought up, Zvi. One of the best counters to Freezing Trap, kind of like a a pint-sized force of nature. That's true. Yeah. 
<laughs> it actually really is. It's half. It, I mean, yeah. obviously, it doesn't cap out at three, but yeah. yeah. So pretty good. Triggers the freezing here. And, and it's important to note uh, in this interaction, you do actually just get a hound in hand, a three mana one one with charge, which Quickly. obviously is not a a good minion by any stretch of the imagination. But at this point, one damage is huge. Yeah, and it's also a three mana disarm trap. Yep. How many opts to hero power here? Hold on to the quick shot. So yeah, Nias is a uh, Nias is currently suffering the curse of being the slower hunter. Is Lothar going to save him? Uh, not really, because uh, then Zoro eat. No, oh, but that's it. Yeah. Zoro is going to take the series 3-2. Wow. That ended up being a really close one, though. It really came down so to that Unleash the Hounds. That unleash the Hounds. I mean, Zoro could have used it earlier, too. So it wasn't like, OK, he got super lucky because he could have joined earlier as well. But still drawing it at the right moment. If, if it was one turn later, it, it would have been too late. Yeah. Right. We saw Haunted Creeper sitting in the hand of Nias in the end there. That's really a card that against the, the face hunter, you either need to have like on coin turn one or turn two, or it just sits in your hand. That's because true. it doesn't give you any immediate board presence. It can be extremely powerful if you get it out on or maybe on turn one with the coin or on, right. on turn two, as you can trade those for the one toughness minions. But sure. later on, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. It's kind of comparable to Zombie Chow in that case. Yeah. Where you just really want to see it early oh, on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very, very solid against uh, a lot of the face hunter minions, which only have one health mm -hmm. uh, with the spiders left behind. But yeah, once you get it at that point, Nice got it way too late and it just kind of sat in hand. There was another bad scientist, there was another freezing trap. But as we talked about, uh, Zoro actually had the three mana 1 1 hound with charge, which would have disarmed the trap anyway. So yeah, really well played series by Zoro. Mm -hmm. uh, again, continues to be fascinating to watch the deck compositions of some of these players who are not from North America or Europe and obviously paid off. Uh, Anias is. No easy opponent to beat. Played extremely well at the America's Championship and uh, is a very high IQ Hearthstone player. Yeah, Nice is down, but he's not out. He will be fighting again later on tonight. He will be fighting for his tournament life. Uh, if he loses that one, he will be out, but he still has a chance. Yeah, and we've actually seen a number of players now are, are going to, as you said, fight for their tournament lives a little bit later on. You know, like Life Coach, Naria, uh, now Nias, others as well. So that, that, uh, these games we're going to see this afternoon or this afternoon are not filled with any you know players you expected to be out at this point in the tournament. Yeah, definitely quite a few matches that are going to we have to say goodbye to a few people, but they all played really well, so they have nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, yeah. these have all been really tight series as well. It hasn't been like one really dominant performance where someone's just gotten shut out. So, and I think uh, so far one of the storylines it's worth considering is the performance of Asia Pacific and China because you know going into this Europe obviously thought Europe was the best region and North America was convinced that North America was the best region and a lot of people are maybe sleeping on Asia Pacific and China but they've come here and put up really impressive performances uh, pretty handily dealing with some of these players who are thought of as some of the best in the world. Is that something you guys expected to see here? Well, it, it's tough to tell. I mean, all the regions have a lot of strong players in them. From the North Americas, three of them are now in the in the losers bracket and only hot from in the winners, but all of them still have a good chance. Right. Yeah. So uh, we've actually got our Rachel standing by to interview Zoro and talk to him about his uh, series. So we'll toss it over to her. Thanks so much, Robert. That's right. I'm here with Zoro and uh, Zoro. I want to know. You looked so confident in the chair. You seem like you've done this a thousand times before. What is your actual tournament experience before BlizzCon weekend? Uh, 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 He's played in a lot of qualifiers like the uh, CN versus United, uh, US League, uh, BlizzCon qualifiers, of course, and also the Gold Series tournaments. And what do you think finally coming here to BlizzCon opening week and seeing the production, seeing all the games, and meeting the players for the first time? Uh, um, he really likes BlizzCon. It gives him a lot of hope, and uh, he has very few opportunities to play in a big tournament like this. Well, since this is uh, an opportunity for you here, I want to give you the chance to say something to your fans. Um, thank you for all my fans, first of all. In the future, I hope to uh, play a little better, make fewer mistakes, and I hope uh, for uh, glory for China. All right, glory for China. We'll see if that all pans out for you later on this week. 
We have our lower bracket coming up next, so don't go anywhere. I'm going to give it back to the casters, and we have lots more games for you today. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, obviously, great to see these players who are, you know, not used to being in bigger tournaments come in and not only play but succeed, really do well and kind of exceed expectations. And you know, obviously, you two are no strangers to big tournaments, but do you remember what it was like playing with those uh, those first few tournaments you guys ever got into? Wow, it was definitely very very stressful, especially when you are like. You know, just joining the first tournament and nobody knows you, but then you know everybody, and you go like, "Wow, Savage! I'm actually going to be playing Savage." So um, it's definitely very, like very very precious situation. Yeah, for me as well. Like the first tournaments that I played, it was so stressful, and that was not on a stage like this. It was smaller tournaments, but uh, for these players, it's definitely one of the uh, a challenge also to just play in front of so many people, playing at the studio in a country maybe f like from far away from China. They might have never traveled to the US before. Everything's different. Yeah. Right. So, so it can be tough. very, uh, very intense experience for them, but obviously no nerves being shown thus far. They're playing very well. Uh, before we go to break here, we definitely want to get you guys to get involved in the conversation. Feel free to tweet at Play Hearthstone, tweet at any of us. Obviously, we'll be tweeting during the duration of the tournament. And we also want to thank our sponsors uh, as well for their contributions and helping to make this possible. So. Uh, before we get into our next match, though, uh, we do want to show you some of the highlights from our last few games brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR.